Yeah, it, it, it sounds like science fiction, uh, really. How much respect have we to give you for this? How close do you believe you are to being able to do this? Uh, look, uh, the, in the course of uh, science history, impossible quotes just popped out all along the way by so-called experts. And uh, we all know that, uh, for instance, in 1903, the Wright brothers just flew their first plane when every, every single scientist at the time believed that that was totally impossible. So I don't believe in the word impossible. I've been just working on this project for the past 30 years, and I think that's a huge time. I've just been working uh, through all st uh, possible stumbling blocks, and uh, I just made the announcement uh, when I was uh, pretty sure that it can be carried out right now. Okay. We have the technology. We have the technology, uh, so you say, right, so we're going to talk people through how you see this being done. Bring us, bring us through the details, Sarah Jane. Uh, well, this is how we understand the procedure will work. I'm sure you'll correct us uh, if we get any points wrong, but we're just going to look at this graphic here to explain it to people at home. Uh, the patient's head and the donor's body are going to be cool to extend the time their cells can survive without oxygen. The tissue around the neck is then dissected and the major blood vessels linked before the spinal cords are cut. The patient's head would then be moved onto their new body and the two ends of the spinal cord fused together using a chemical called polythylene glucol as a type of glue. The patient would then be kept in a coma for three to four weeks to help mesh the body parts together with electrodes fitted to help stimulate the spinal cord to strengthen new nerve connections. 